Hey everybody, it's Justin, and today I'm going to be bringing you a tutorial on how to use VS Code as basically a replacement to the developer console. So this is going to be more of a beginner tutorial designed to basically get your feet wet using uh, VS Code as an environment to be a Salesforce developer. So we're going to be covering things like how to create a project, how to authorize an org, how to um, create classes, triggers, how to run test code, how to debug your code using debug logs. Uh, and um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, so with that, let's jump into the requirements that you need. So I'm in Chrome right now. And the first thing you're gonna need is obviously VS Code. Um, so if you are on Arch Linux, which I don't know why you wouldn't be, uh, you know, use Pac-Man. Uh, otherwise, you know, if you have the goal to not use Arch Linux, then just follow the instructions on VS Code to install VS Code. Uh, next thing you'll need is the SFDX CLI. Um, I strongly, strongly recommend using NPM to manage your versions. And the reason why is because you're gonna to wanna to be updating the SFDX CLI a lot. And it's just easiest to be using some sort of package manager. Um, so if you're using NPM, because uh, you probably don't have a package manager, um, then this will set you up for success long-term. So in, in a week when uh, SFDX breaks, uh, because that happens, because you're doing something, um, you can automatically get the patch or you know quickly get the patch and you're not spending an hour reinstalling. The next thing you'll need is the extensions for VS Code. So this is what allows the SFDX CLI to interact with VS Code well. Um, so you can just see the installation instructions here um, and you can also see what this includes, but this is basically the bundled pack. Uh, so if you go and search the VS Code extension marketplace, it'll actually redirect you to this page and that's because it wants you to download everything. Um, so I, what is there like eight or nine uh, different uh, packages here and um, I'd say just get them all because you'll use them all at some point. And the last thing you'll need is Java. Uh, this is what is required to get the test environment working. Uh, so I use the adopt open uh, whatever you have, like if you have Java installed already, don't worry about this, but you'll need some sort of JDK uh, and follow instructions to install per your operating system. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to jump into an empty or fresh, you know, VS Code window. Uh, so what I have here is uh, VS Code. And if you press, uh, let's see, what is it? Uh, Control Shift P. This is how you run a command in VS Code. And we're going to create a project. Uh, so if this doesn't auto, you know, if this doesn't appear here, then you can do SFDX create project. And um, this will come. Uh, you can also just do create project and just make sure it's for the SFDX module. Um, there's three options from here for like templates. I probably recommend doing the empty templates uh, for most of the things you're going to be doing. Um, if you're not just cloning it from the uh, package XML and we'll just do a test project. And we'll put that, um, well, you can't see that, so just put it in my documents. Um, so we have this project here, and this is what an empty um, folder looks like, and it'll run some things. Don't, don't worry about it too much. Uh, what we want to do is authorize an org, so you can either click down here and select an org if you have a couple um, set up, or you can authorize an org. I'm going to do that. Um, this is the URL that you'd use. So if it's a sandbox, you need to use the test.salesforce. If it's prod, you'd use login, do login, uh, give it a test alias, and this will pop up in your browser. You just press login, uh, and the magic of OAuth makes this possible so that then you can continuously um, use this as uh, and, and push your code. Uh, and you can see down here uh, at the bottom left, actually you can't see it, hold on. You can see down here, um, SFDX authorized and work successfully. And so all your commands are actually gonna be at the bottom left, uh, which of course my you know, face is covering. Um, 
let's see. Uh, with that, I'm going to just jump into um, an org that has some code. Um, so what do I have here? So I have the QuickBooks Sync org that I used in one of my previous videos. Uh, if you haven't seen that video and you're interested in a QuickBooks tutorial on how to sync your data from QuickBooks to Salesforce, click the link above. Uh, but um, let's say you want to do a couple things. Maybe you want to create a project or not create a project, create a class. So um, I'm going to pull up the command and do create uh, Apex class and give it a file name, just call it test class. Um, and then this is the directory that will be this will be stored locally. Um, I just always do use the default because I believe that's easiest. Um, and you can see that there's some boilerplate code here. Uh, and if you want to deploy this, um, then you would just press deploy the source to work. Um, this is the same for a visual force page, a trigger, a lightning web component. It all just kind of creates the various things that you need and the various metadata that you need. Uh, and if you want to delete this because, um, I don't know, uh, you, you gave it the wrong name, uh, whatever, um, the code's just not needed. Uh, what you want to do is delete from project and org. So just right click and you can delete. Um, you'll get a warning down here, deleting source files, yada, 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 are you sure? And then you can just press delete source and you will see success. And um, that's all you need to know for that. Um, let's see, the next thing is executing anonymous. So, um, I don't have any good code to execute anonymous with, uh, but we can just do, I don't know, uh, what is it, system.debug, and of course, I just forgot how to write code. Um, but uh, that's okay. I'm just confused because the editor command isn't working since I'm here. Okay, so you have system debug hello world. Uh, so let's say I want to execute anonymous. So we're just going to execute anonymous with currently selected text, as you can see here. And um, you can see that it ran successfully. We can scroll through this uh, and you can see the command and um, you can see that it started whatever, you can see the limits. Um, but this isn't really super helpful on its own, potentially. Um, I mean, if you're looking for maybe records to be updated, then um, you don't necessarily need debug logs, but if you want to see your debug logs, um, those aren't being tracked like how they are in developer console. So you have to automatically set that. Uh, and the way you do that is um, you search for debug. Uh, the first thing you want to do is actually turn on Apex debug log um, for replay logger. Uh, it'll run through some things and then it will say success, as you can see down here. Um, the next thing you'll want to do is just run your code again. Uh, so then we'll just uh, execute anonymous. And not much to say there. But then the last thing we'll do is we'll actually get the Apex debug log and that will uh, download the log manually. Um, so you can see a log from earlier today, but then um, this is the most recent log at four and um, well, it's just the text, so there you go. Um, and if you search for, let's see, debug, then you can see hello world. Wow, um, big shocker. Let's see. Um, I think the last thing that's gonna be helpful is uh, running tests. So to do that, you wanna click on this little beaker, uh, and that's for testing. Uh, now, if this is blank, that means that, and, and you don't see any tests, that means either, uh, well, if it's blank, then it means you have no tests. And if you have no test, or if it's blank, then that means Java isn't set up. And if you have no tests, it'll say you have no tests, you should write some test code and uh, annotate it appropriately. 
Um, but you can run each basically method individually. Um, so if you're in a large environment, that can be useful. Or if you want to get um, just run all of these at once, then um, you just press the play button and it'll say ran and because I scrolled all the way up. Um, but this might look different than yours. Um, so I have the percent, uh, normally it'll, it'll do just pass fail. And the reason why is there's a setting that you'll want to change. So if you go to settings, if I can click, um, and then just search for debug, uh, and then you wanna make sure it's the Salesforce. Um, let's see, it's not that one. It's, uh, sorry, it's test code. Uh, and you wanna make sure this is checked. It specifies whether code coverage results are calculated and retrieved. And so then when that's done, I already had it checked, but if you run it again, if you hadn't had it checked, um, what you can do is you can um, see the test coverage by clicking this highlight Apex code coverage, which is great. Um, and then you can see it for any of the classes. So I think this might be another one that I have. Uh, so you can see the related code, which is pretty nice. Uh, with that, I believe that's everything to, you need to know to get your toes wet within VS Code. If there's something that I missed that you think is important, leave it down in the comments below and maybe I'll address it in a follow-up video for more advanced tips. Um, with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, subscribe and leave a like. Uh, it helps the channel out and uh, lets me know that uh, I'm doing a good job and you'd like to see more of this content. So um, thanks and have a good day.